Hello everyone, this is Marcy with MyPrettyPoshPrincess.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a fun rear view mirror dangle using this week's 100 count bead lot of the week as voted by you on our Facebook page which is Facebook.com slash MyPrettyPoshPrincess. Make sure you go like and follow us every week. I give you two options, you get to vote and the winning lot will be featured for a week on our website for only $15.99 for 100 count. So the winner this week is the lavender medium pink, gold, and turquoise. So this is an example of the winning lot for this week. And usually I make a necklace. This week I decided to do something different and show you something that's really fun. It's actually quite cheap to make because you only need a couple of beads to do it. And it's a really great filler. So if you do any shows, um, this is a great item that has a really big profit margin for you. So what a rear view mirror dangle is, is just as it sounds. You hang it around your rear view mirror um, and it's just a really cute little decorative item for the car. Um, I've been making these for years. So let me show you, I've, I've done it quite a few different ways in the past. This is my favorite way. So what we are going to be using today, I have it all set out here, is our tiger tail wire. We have that on our website. We are going to be using six millimeter spacers, silver spacers. We are gonna be using split rings and the lobster claw toggles as well as a rope toggle. I have a couple of different pendants laid out here and as we're using them, I'm gonna tell you what they are so you can write that down and you can find them on the website in case you wanna purchase them. I am going to make this as an interchangeable um, pendant. So I'm using the lobster claw, you don't have to use it on this, but I am, so that you could use all three of these pendants, give your customer choice if you wanted to, or just have the dangle ready to go, let them pick a pendant, it kind of makes gives it more value. So first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to cut our wire. Now I'm gonna double this wire up it here so I'm gonna double this wire up so I'm gonna do it kind of long because we're gonna fold it not fold it but we're gonna kind of put it in half and we're gonna double it up um, so just pull out a decent amount of your wire and cut it so there's that and then bring the ends together like so and I kind of get them even, which I just undid. I'm gonna use the rope toggles for this. I have a lot of different toggle options on the website and you can use any of those. I recommend the rope toggles because they're a little bit bigger. And when you're trying to get this up around the rear view mirror of the car, something that's a little bit bigger, easier to use um, in that tight spot up there might be a good option. But again, you can use whatever you want. So let me see, this is gonna be on the top. Okay, so we have our wire folded in half. Not really folded in half, but put in half as you can see. So I've put this toggle on here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the ends and I'm going to string it through and pull it tight. So if you can see that there, this is on there really securely. Then what we need to do is start stringing on our spacers. Now you're gonna use more spacers for this project than you're gonna use beads. And we're gonna calculate at the end, I'm gonna tell you an approximate cost to make one of these so you'll see how there's just such extreme value to this project. So let's start stringing these on here and we're gonna eyeball it as to how many spacers to put. Let's string this on. Thank you. 
Okay, so I actually decided to do 35 of the six millimeter beads. It's been a while since I made one of these. So I did about 35, and you can do however many you want. And the reason for that, and you keep seeing me do this, is because I this is how it hangs in the car. So at this point, after we put the 35 beads on there, and of course these are six millimeters, so if you do four millimeter, which you can, um, and if you wanna follow this pattern or this tutorial, you're gonna need more than 35 because they're a little bit smaller. So there's that. That's on there, and if you can tell, so this is how this is gonna be secured around the rear view mirror. So that toggle goes in the middle of clasp. So once we put that right there, so we have our rope or whatever loop toggle you wanna use. We did 35 six millimeter spacers and then we have the stick part of the clasp it goes right there in the middle. And then we're gonna string a couple more, and I need to make sure I leave room. So we're gonna string a couple more of the six millimeter now at that toggle. So, so far what we've done is we have doubled up our wire. We have used a, used a tying technique to tie the loop on the end. We have 35, I believe that's what I said, I already forgot, spacers before the toggle. We put the stick and then we put 10 more. So now what we're gonna do is add our beads. So I have picked five beads laid out here from the 100 count lot. And because this 100 count lot is on sale as the bead lot of the week, that makes each bead, or each for five beads, so you actually only have 79 cents in beads on your dangle, which is really cheap. Um, and I have seen these being sold at craft fairs and things like that for eight to $10 um, more depending on what kind of pendant or option that you have. So if you start thinking about that in terms of your profit, you are to a really, really good start. The spacers are maybe $1.50 for a ton of them. Um, you probably wouldn't use an entire bag for one. You might be able to get a couple of dangles out of a bag. Um, so, the cost mark, the, the profit margin on a rear view mirror, mirror dangle is very good for you. So I've strung the beads on. Right now on this dangle, we have 79 cents worth of beads um, by purchasing this at the bead lot of the week price of $15.99 for 100. And I have spacers. The toggles are on the website. You get five sets of toggles for $1.25. You get 20 split rings for $1.25 and 10 lobster clasps for 99 cents. So if you do the math, you split that all out, you would just divide 99 cents by 10. That would get you, give you your price for one lobster clasp. You only need one for each dangle. Um, and do the same thing for the rest of your hardware to get an actual cost. I think the last time that I calculated this, not taking into consideration how much a pendant might cost, it was less than $2, and it was like way less than $2 to make an entire rear view mirror jangle. So now that we have all of our spacers on here, and I believe it's about 45 spacers plus our one, two, three, four, five. So we have about 50 six millimeter spacers on here. Um, what we need to do is attach our split ring and our lobster clasp. Now you need to remember, the reason that you need a split ring and you can't just string the lobster clasp on is 
if we did that, let me should give you an example. So this is it hooked not onto the split ring and it makes it sideways. Um, so then when you, when you put this on, when you put your pendant on, that makes it sideways as well. So the importance of the split ring is that it actually turns the lobster clasp. So I have my split ring attached to the lobster clasp and I have that strung onto the wire here. And I still have my doubled up wire. Now we're gonna do a tying technique for this because it makes it a lot easier in my opinion. And I'm actually going to use my needle nose pliers for that because then I can pull it a lot tighter. And I'm not even gonna do any fancy sort of tying. So what I want to do here is, as you can see, I'm gonna bring this around and I'm gonna pull it up through. And I'm gonna use my, well, I can just do it like this and then I'm gonna use my pliers to get it tight because I want it to be as close to the last spacer as possible and it actually really wasn't very close there so let me put these down and focus here so you want to get it as close as possible to that last spacer so that when you pull it tight it gives it a really strong complete look okay so as you can see i'm getting pretty close i'm okay with that no actually i'm not i want it to be a little bit closer i'm kind of picky i'm sure you guys are too just have a vision in your head you want it to be perfect so i just want this super close I would recommend do not put lotion on your hands. You probably already know that from making jewelry. Don't put lotion on your hands when you're about to make a project because it makes it so much harder using these little pieces and trying to string this stuff through. Okay, so hopefully this I can pull closer. Closer, I'm getting there and that looks pretty good, okay. So I'm gonna use my needle nose pliers here. I'm just gonna hold the wire and I'm gonna pull. You see that on there? So I'm pulling pretty strong. I, I can pull it stronger using my needle nose pliers than I can with my hands, especially since I decided to put lotion on not too long ago. So that's one knot. Now my favorite technique because it makes it better stronger obviously you shouldn't have somebody yanking on this in the car um, but you still want to make the highest quality product you can so i'm gonna first measure how long i need my wire to be so that i can tuck it back in because i am absolutely not going to cut it right here bad idea don't do that so i want to see i want to hide this the ends back up inside of this bead here so i'm gonna cut this about what looks about midway through. So hopefully you can see that, that's about midway through cutting. Now I'm going to wrap, using my needle nose pliers, I'm gonna wrap this, I might be able to start it with my hands, I'm gonna start wrapping it around this little bit of wire that's left here. So if you can see, there's one loop around, and another loop around, and it's gonna be a little loose because I'm doing it with my fingers right now, but I'm gonna pull it tight with my, my pliers. So I'm gonna do that about two or three times depending on how much leeway you leave yourself with how you trim it. So if you wanna wrap it a couple extra times, leave yourself a little more because you need this wire here to be able to string through your spacer and through your bead so that it's resting inside of here. So now that I've wrapped it, I think I've wrapped it, twice i'm gonna pull it with my my pliers pull my pliers down closer to the edge here and i'm going to stick this back through as you can see my pliers are a little dirty um 
stick this back through. It's going through this hole. This is why I prefer to use six millimeter over four millimeter because everything that I make, I double up my wire. And so I have more room to string back through. It's just a really good and easy reinforcement on your wire. Probably should have wrapped that a couple more times. I'm gonna pull mine out here. I wanna wrap it a couple more times. Let me set this down. My wires are messy. Okay. Um, pliers left stuff all over me. I don't know what I was last working on. Okay. So I'm gonna wrap it around a couple more times. I don't, I didn't, wasn't really comfortable with the two wraps. I'm gonna do at least three wraps. I think it looks better, it makes it more secure and more tight. Okay, so I have the three, three times around. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna have to kind of hold it tight so that I can get a hold of it here because it's gonna wanna swing back away. And now I'm gonna tuck it back inside. So I'm tucking it into my six millimeter spacer, which in turn is tucking it right through that hole of my top bead. And now I'm gonna kind of push my, my top spacer up and over. So as you can see, it's pretty strong, pretty tucked in there. So this is what we're looking at right now. We've got, if I believe right, if I can remember right, 35 spacers plus the four, five spacers here. So 45 spacers, something like that on here in our toggle. This is the part that's gonna go around that top of the rear view mirror and you're gonna hook it like this. Maybe if I can get it here. So there we go. And this is how it dangles. So this is how it's gonna hang. I know from this angle of the camera, it's hard to see. Um, this is the part that's gonna be hanging down. And the great thing about using the lobster clasp option is now you can pick what pendant you want. So say you have these at a craft fair, you have it just like this, and then you might have these three pendants set up as examples. Your customers are looking at it and you can say, this is a rear view mirror dangle. It comes with your choice of one pendant for $12.99. Um, this Dreamcatcher pendant, if you search the website, type in P is in Paul, 58. So P58 to find the Dreamcatcher, it's 325. Um, this diamond kind of amulet, this one is H is in Harry, 22. So H22, type that in. This is 275. And then we have kind of this amulet option. If you're looking for this on the website, P is in Paul, 67. So P67. And it's $3 for this drop pendant on the website. So even taking that into consent on the website, so even taking that into consideration, our most expensive option right here is the Dreamcatcher. At 325, you add the 79 cents in for what it costs for these beads using our bead lot of the month price. And you add in the fraction of the cost because you're splitting it between your different hardware. You are still safely under $5, and that's using one of the higher end or more expensive pendants. You're still under $5 for one of these, and I would charge no less than $12.99 or $13 for a rear view mirror dangle that includes a pendant. You do not have to put a pendant on here. You could put this like this. You could finish it off another way. You could put anything you want. You could put something cheaper at the end. You could just do a sparkle bead at the end, a rhinestone. Um, to keep your costs down, but I have found that people really enjoy this interchangeable and sometimes people will want all three and then you can charge them five, six bucks for each one of these if you want, um, add it onto the price and that's where you can really, really increase your profit, but the value is really there for your customer. So these are extremely cute. I've done them so many different ways. You can do them using literally any combination of beads that we have. People love these. They're really fun gifts for mom, grandma. Um, I've done sports themed ones. I've, I've done 
so many. My mother-in-law has one that's been hanging in her car probably for six or seven years. It has a picture of my kids on it. It's really cute. That's another fun option. Um, but here it is. This is a rear view mirror dangle using only five 20 millimeter chunky beads, about 45 to 56 millimeter spacers, some toggles, and we have a fun interchangeable system on here so that you can put any pendant that you want. Look at how cute that is. Such a fun option. So if you've never made a rear view, rear view, ugh, that's a mouthful, rear view mirror dangle before, it's easy, it's fun, it's cheap to make, and it's different. So check it out. Head over to myprettyposhprincess.com, get all of the supplies that you need to make this amazing and fun item. If you have any questions, drop a comment, send me a message, you know I'm always here to help. Thank you so much for watching. And again, make sure you're following us on all of the platforms so that you can vote for next week's Be Lot of the Month and so that you can see all of our new tutorials. Thanks again for watching and have a fantastic day.